I'm uh, standing here at the Pinnacles and uh, over there behind us you can see the Clarence River and the bridge heading up north to Brisbane about 300 k's, about 700 k's down to Sydney and behind us is the town of McLean and I'm standing here with my grandchildren who are part of the Murray clan and uh, I want to tell you a Scottish story today because this is the most Scottish town in Australia and uh, so we feel like our clans, the Bairds, the, the Murrays, the McDonalds, uh, we're, we're pretty Scottish really, so it's important for us to know the story, but I thought you might need to know the story too, because not many people know what the Scots have given to Australia. So today, we're going to take you down the hill there and we'll find out more of that story. I'm in the uh, Free Presbyterian Church with David Kerridge, who's the minister here. Thanks, David, for taking the time. But uh, this is a very interesting building because uh, I understand it's a very early building in McLean. Yes, it's, it's uh, actually one of the uh, oldest buildings in McLean. It was originally Rocky Mouth was, it was the original place and mm. it was a, a port. And uh, this church was perhaps the oldest public building in town. And still in continual use. And still in continual use. So, so. It, it, it's fascinating because in country towns, my experience is that the, the first bill is usually a pub or a police station. <laughs> so you think this so. says a lot about McLean that the, yeah. the Presbyterian Church was one of the first. Yeah, well, it's Scottish settlers and we pretend to be the Scottish town in Australia. So, yeah. uh, so uh, with the Scottish settlers, I think their uh, faith was important to them. Yeah, absolutely. And so they established the church. So when I look at this church... It's simplicity. You know, I grew up in a church that was very simple too. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a message in the church and the structure here. Can you explain this here? Yeah, the, sure. Uh, yeah. Well, the, the pulpit is central. You know, the, the preaching of God's word is central to the, to the church. And so that's the main focus. So, that's up so high. the pulpit's up, up high in the center of the church. Was it even higher? Uh, it was at one stage a bit higher. <laughs> so that, that I think there was another panel down oh, here. Okay. And it was, it was a bit higher. <laughs> but um, uh, certainly it was, it's the central part of the church. There's yeah. a story of a, a minister who used to thump the back wall really? to emphasize his <laughs> points. So it was... It was one of the... Sounds very Scottish. Yeah, but he was um, very emphatic. But uh, yeah, so the pulpit's central in the church, and it's, it's the main focus that we have the Word of God mm. in, in the centre. But the, and this here? This here is the uh, presenter's box. So the presenter was, uh, uh, was someone who, who leads the singing, and we still uh, sing unaccompanied in psalms. So there's no musical instrument here? No musical instruments in the church. We just, mm. have, the, we just have the psalms, and we sing God's Word in that way, and... Um, and rejoice in, in him and uh, so that's uh, the presenter leads the singing so presenter means the first singer mm. uh, he sings out the uh, out the words and uh, in the old scottish tradition he'd sing the whole line first and then everyone would oh, sing, after everybody him. sing after him. and that happens in the gaelic psalms a lot but and in gaelic uh, well no not 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 with us no one <laughs> understands the gaelic except one lady in the church but um but it's uh it's certainly the idea that uh, yeah that the singing is being led by the presenter and and when people couldn't read and they didn't have books uh, that's how the, the presenter would lead them singing the first line and then they'd join in. I read yesterday that the early minister would preach in English and then in Gaelic after all. Yeah, he'd have two, two services, service. yeah. yeah. So two services in, in the English and then and then in the Gaelic because there and were I, so many Gaelic In the speakers. museum I saw a Gaelic Bible. I'm going to have yeah. a look at one in a minute. Sure, yeah, yeah we can do that. Yeah. So that's a long tradition and that it's sort of at the heart of this town really, isn't it? The Presbyterian Scots... It is. It is it is singing. slowly being forgotten, but we still have the Highland Gathering and different Scottish uh, events around the town. But yes, that Scottish heart of, mm. uh, of the original settlers is, uh, is still here. And sh do you think it shaped the district in some way? I think it certainly has. Uh, it has certainly has shaped the district in terms of community, in terms of, of, of gathering around um, and, uh, and making a go of it. Well, David, I'm holding... Uh a Gaelic Bible, and <laughs> I can't understand a word, I don't think, <laughs> even though I've got a Scots background. But it's amazing to think in the pulpit here, in the early days, both languages were used. Yes, yeah, the, the original minister, uh, Mr McGuinness, um, would have preached from English uh, in one service and then had a Gaelic service for the, the Gaelic mm. speakers, and, and most of them would have spoken Gaelic. Yeah. Uh, it, of course, as the generations went on, that, uh, that original language sort of slowly died out. And that was part of out. the reason they came to Australia, wasn't it? They were being told in Scotland, you can't speak Gaelic, you've yeah. got to stop wearing the kilt. That's right. Uh, and that was part of the reason they left, was well, it? Well, there was the clearances in the, uh, in the 1800s, mid-1800s. What and, were the clearances? Uh, well, the clearances were land was being appropriated by the, the lairds and the manor for, for grazing. And so the, the, the crofters and the small farmers were all being 
pushed out. Pushed out. And that was one of the big reasons for migration. Um, and so my forebears came out in the 1840s mm. uh, for that very reason, because they were being pushed off their land um, and made their to, ancestral to, land. Yeah, to find other places to live. So some so similarity with the Aboriginal people. Yeah, really. there, there, is a, there is a similarity there mm. too. But, yeah. um, so yeah. Gaelic. That's amazing. Uh, yeah. An ancient language and still alive here in McLean for Indeed. a while. Indeed. For a while. We have one, one lady here who yeah. is the, um, our retired minister's wife. She speaks, uh, still okay. speaks the Gaelic. Uh, it'd be great to hear. If you uh, walk around McLean, you'll find lots of these telegraph poles with the clan names and the clan tartan on it. This is my mother's clan, the Baird clan. Uh, my grandfather, Robert Baird, came out at the uh, turn of the 20th century and uh, lived in Sydney from Glasgow and his family joined him, the Careys. I remember him as an old man and he was very dual Scott, you know, wore the watch chain. When he, <laughs> he made the lawn he had polished boots and uh, he shined the sink after breakfast and you weren't allowed to use it until lunchtime. He was very Scots and he always talked about the old country, the old country. But I like to think he was also a man of faith and uh, he was in the Scottish tradition. And one incident I remember about him that speaks of bravery was uh, he was on a station in Sydney, old man over 80. A man started beating up a girl on the station and so grandfather intervened and he got king hit, smashed. And I remember him coming home with blood everywhere and uh, I look back and I think, well, that's the bravery side of the Scots. Uh, the, each, each clan has a motto, and uh, the Baird clan motto is Dominus Vesit. In other words, we, we've, we've got where we are by God's will. And uh, I think it says something about all the clans. They had their own special message and they brought it to, to Australia, and that sort of shaped them and it shaped this town. We'll go up on the hill in a moment and have a look up there and learn a bit more about the Scottish heritage of Australia. Well, I'm looking over the beautiful Clarence River Valley here over McLean. And uh, behind me you can see a cairn, and it's obviously Scottish. It's got the, the piper on the top there. And uh, each of these rocks comes from a different part of Australia where the, the clans of Scotland settled. And some of them even came from Scotland itself. Around the base of the cairn are all the Scottish clans. So this one here is the, the Vain clan, the McDool clan. And they've all got their, their mottos. And uh, this was the way for the Scottish community here to identify with the larger Scottish community spread out across Australia. Two million people in Australia claim Scottish heritage. In our family, there are at least four, four clans related to our family, the Murrays, uh, the McDonalds, the, the Careys and the Bairds. So, you know, I feel that connection to Scotland and to the traditions of Scotland and each of these had their motto, and all of their mottos had to do with strength and courage and virtues. Of... I've moved away from the Cairn, but that's the scene. It's the beautiful Clarence River and this beautiful Green Valley. And you can see why the Scots wanted to settle here. Um, in my own family, the Baird family, I discovered back in 1820 there was a man called John Baird who was part of a, a revolt in, in Scotland. They called it the Radical War. And it was a big thing. Uh, Tens of thousands joined it, and he was a military man, so he was one of the leaders. And uh, but they were outflanked by the military, and eventually captured, and the, the revolt was finished. John Baird and uh, Andrew Hardy were taken and going to be hung. Before they were hung, a great crowd assembled, six to ten thousand people. Uh, they sang hymns for an hour beforehand, they sang psalms, and then they were allowed to speak. And Andrew Hardy said, well, we're standing for truth and justice. They, they said, that's what we're here for. And maybe when our blood shed, uh, that will remind Scotland of what's really, really important. Well, they were pretty brave men. Axe fell and also they were hung first, then they were beheaded. Um, but that story is echoed in Scotland for 200 years. And just a couple of years ago, the Scottish Parliament agreed that, yep, those men were standing for what was right and true, and I'm sure that obviously came out of their, 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 their Christian faith. Why were the Scots coming to Australia en masse? Well, at least 19 of those men who were part of that revolt, they were sent here as convicts. 
many others were being driven off the highlands. It was called the clearances. And uh, from, well, before 1800, but it carried on through the, the 19th century. So about the middle of the century, there was another push clearance. They were being told to stop speaking Gaelic, their, their national language, thrown off their lands, their ancestral lands, and dispossessed. So they got on boats to come to Australia, Canada. As they left, they were singing psalms, uh, sad to leave their country, but looking for an opportunity. And here they are in this valley and in rivers all the way up the coast. Uh, the Scottish community. The first building built here was <laughs> the Scottish Free Presbyterian Church. It wasn't a pub, wasn't a, a police station. That was the first thing. So it says something about this Scottish clan thing with its downside, but there was also a great strength they brought. Enterprise, courage, um, faith, that mixture, and you'll find it spread across Australia through the Presbyterian churches. And I like to think my family played a part in that. And proud to sort of stand here as a descendant of those Scots and men like John Baird, who stood for what was just and true and had a strong Christian faith to go with it. So that's my personal clan story that mixes with the clan story here in this beautiful valley along the Clarence River.